Okay, today's lecture is on implementation, and this is kind of an unusual chapter in the textbook in the sense that it also includes testing related activities which are not normally included uh, in, a, uh, in the SDLC as a part of implementation. Usually there's a separate phase for testing in the SDLC, but we will cover both of them simultaneously here. Um, and I know this is another one of those uh, common sayings in this class. Because it is a survey course, uh, you could actually think of this lecture as really an entire degree program in some universities. Certainly a multiple course sequence uh, in other universities. It's the kind of thing that uh, we actually have here at UMBC in both the IS department and in the CSWE department. Courses that essentially are teaching you implementation methods and techniques, including testing methods and techniques. Uh, so this is a huge topic and we're only really going to be scratching the surface and talking about some of the things that you would need to care about from a managerial standpoint. Uh, so one of the key things to recognize though is implementation phase really is where the rubber hits the road. Um, typically in project management you want to start at the very beginning thinking about all of the concerns that you have and planning for them. Uh, but until you get to implementation it's very hard to get good concrete metrics measuring where you're at. Uh, so it's very difficult to know if you're ahead of schedule, behind schedule, or you know how far behind schedule you are until you have code that's either working or not working. Even in an early state, it's very difficult to say. Okay, so that's why implementation is such a critical part from the, the SDLC perspective and from a managerial perspective. Now, we've talked about some of the activities that you're going to want to do in implementation uh, as a way of highlighting what they are, but uh, we haven't, and we not even in this lecture, are we going to get into some of the specifics on how to do a lot of these in detail, uh, mostly hoping to introduce them to you so you have a better sense of what they are and why you need them, uh, what purpose they serve, but not explicitly the, the best practices for doing every single one of these. And again, this textbook includes testing. Agile processes would include testing as a part of implementation, uh, but most organizations, most textbooks would not really think of testing as part of an implementation. They would usually consider it to be a separate phase. Now, one thing that we have to highlight at the very beginning is that there is a difference between verification and validation. Uh, these terms are very similar to coupling and cohesion in the sense that they both start with the same letter and they often get confused for one another and that as soon as you start con conflating them in your writing, it will be very difficult for me to tell whether or not it is just an accidental uh, misuse of the term or whether you actually do not understand the concept. So from an exam standpoint, from a studying standpoint, you just have to know these definitions cold. Verification refers to the question, are we building the product right? Meaning, are we taking the correct actions to build this product? Regardless of what the product's design is, are we doing it in such a way that you would think of them as good engineering practices? Validation, on the other hand, is the question, are we building the right product? Right? Are we building something that the customer actually wants that will solve a real problem, uh, regardless of the development methods that we're using underneath the covers. Now obviously you want to use both good development methods and also have uh, an answer to whether or not the stakeholder needs the product uh, for for whatever you're building, right? You, you need both verification and validation. Uh, but it's not possible to, to get both of those things if you're trying to just answer one question, are we doing it right, right? Like you want to make sure that you're thinking about both the methods and techniques you're using as well as the end result that you're going to achieve uh, while you're building it. Uh, one way to kind of think about this is uh, validation is kind of an external measure, right? You're looking at what the stakeholders would say and verification is kind of an internal measure, especially if the stakeholder is not involved in your process. Uh, because the verification is really all about your process and validation is really all about the product. Uh, and we can think about both verification and validation throughout the testing life cycle, but we should also be thinking about it in terms of the implementation activities that we're building, right? Because they, they need to be separate concepts, not just for testing purposes, but also for implementation purposes. Uh, and with this these definitions in mind, it's worth thinking about this uh, if we were really, really good at building software, writing code, right, there would be no actual mechanical errors in the construction of the, the code, whatever it is that we're building. Would we still have to test software in that instance, right? Would we still have to test software in that instance? 
Uh, it's worth thinking about this for a couple of minutes on your own. Obviously, we, you can't do uh, any sort of discussion unless you happen to live with somebody who's also taking this class. Um, but it's worth thinking about for a moment. So if you haven't got an answer or pause the video to really consider, um, now is a good time. The answer is that, yeah, we would definitely still need to test software, and there are many reasons why. Uh, conditions could change as we're building the software. Uh, humans are flaky and they change their minds from time to time. Uh, stakeholders may simply not know what they want. They may know that they have a problem, but not really know what would solve it. Um, and then perfect construction of code is, is kind of like irrelevant for all of those circumstances. It's not really that big of a benefit from a software development standpoint. Um, I actually think of, of this as a hypothetical that is not dissimilar from the hypothetical if we were able to um, type at the keyboard perfectly, meaning we would never hit a key that we were unintentionally, uh, that we weren't trying to hit, the, you know, we would never have a typo. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to be able to do that, but it doesn't fundamentally change the question of what should I be writing or what should I be typing. Um, you still have this question about the end process that's very difficult to solve. Um, and I think this is also kind of true if you extend this question from um, just what, if we were really good at writing code to if we were really good at the process stuff, meaning if we had perfect verification throughout the, the thing that we're building, uh, would we still need to test? And the answer is yes, because you would need to test for validation, right? Is the product correct? Uh, verification on its own is not particularly um, useful. It doesn't eliminate the need for testing. Right? It's nice to be able to test for verification because we don't write code perfectly and you know we don't have correct processes all the time. Uh, but it wouldn't on its own if that was the, the solution. If some magical fairy came down and blessed humanity with the ability to do that sort of thing, we would still have to test because uh, validation is a concern. All right, so uh, I think the next section we will talk a little bit about code reviews, and uh, we're probably not going to be able to go through all of these. I think we'll break it roughly here.